Well, good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, good to see you. Well, I, I don't see you, but uh, uh, I, I know you're out there. And uh, um, happy Veterans Day. Uh, I want us to thank God for uh, being so good to our country and for our veterans. And um, then I want us to thank, I want you to thank, if you hadn't thanked a veteran already today, um, see one tomorrow and thank him for his service. God's been so good to us over the years, and I'm thankful for that. I want us to take uh, time and pray for our country, pray for the next president, pray for the, all the staff and all the, every, everything that goes together to make our life peaceful and, and comfortable and, uh, and protect us from um, the outside influences. And, um, I've got in front of me our prayer list and a printed copy of it. And um, Troy Davidson's still in the hospital. We pray for him. I think they're trying to decide whether he needs to go to rehab or not. Patsy Davis is in the hospital. Um, she's having a, an arteriogram tomorrow and um, um, found out that she had a heidel hernia. And um, uh, anyway, pray for her. Lift her up in prayer. We've got two non-members. Uh, we've got two members that ask us to pray for uh, Kim Scott, um, was given to us by Donna Frisbee, and Mike Bacon, given to us by Joe Lynn Taylor, wants us to pray for them. We've got a lot of names on our member prayer list, and we have had for a good while, and we need to be lifting each other up in prayer. We've got I'm just going to guess we've got somewhere in the vicinity of um, 40 to 50 um, members that have tested positive, maybe more than that, and we need to pray for them, um, pray that they will uh, uh, get over this COVID and be able to get back uh, to their life. And uh, we're going to keep praying for our missionaries. The missionaries are still serving the Lord in the, in a, in the midst of uh, the countries that they're serving is having a tough time um, with this uh, pandemic um, in Honduras and and then uh, Carly Hall in East Asia and and um, uh, the McIntyres in Guatemala, the suffrages in Alaska, um, Beesons in uh, uh, Louisiana, Jordan and Hannah, lift them up in prayer and um, uh, Larry Wright, of course, building leaders and uh, prevail missions um, and missionaries in Ukraine and uh, the Partridge family in Germany. And there are many others, but they're still serving the Lord even in, even in uh, the difficult times. And pray for, uh, especially for Marina, who is uh, uh, supposed to be coming back to the uh, United States and maybe already back here. Uh, but anyway, and uh, we want to pray for each other, uh, lift each other up in prayer, and uh, we need revival. You know, our pastor's been uh, telling us and, and guiding us in that direction, and if we're going to have revival, it has to start not out there, but it has to start right here. And so I'm praying, Lord, uh, do something special in my heart to help me to be closer to you today and tomorrow than I've ever been before. And uh, wherever you are in your house, I want you to pray. I want you to uh, bow your head and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, you're such an awesome God. We praise you. We honor you. Thank you again for being so good to us over the years, Lord. And we pray, God, that our country would uh, uh, allow you back into our uh, school systems and back into our politics and back into our uh, back into. Uh, every facet of our of, of our country, and God, we pray that uh, uh, we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We pray for our pastor who's taking a, a, a few days off, and we just pray that you'd uh, help him to um, help him to be re-energized re re and come back uh, uh, to guide us and direct us, and. Uh, Again, Lord, we, we pray for those that are in the hospital. We pray for those that are uh, dealing with all kinds of issues at home. And, and uh, we come together as a body of Christ uh, where two or three are together, together in prayer. 
And so, Lord, we lift up all those around us that we know about, so many names, so many people that need a special touch of encouragement. These are discouraging days. And, Lord, help us to look up and uh, rejoice uh, because we're closer to seeing you now than we've ever been before. We're closer to seeing our relatives that have gone on before us. And uh, maybe today, maybe tonight, Lord, we just want you to know that we love you. May this be a, a, a blessed day for you. Uh, you deserve it. And uh, we just lift, pray. And again, we want to thank you for the veterans and their service and, and for our military. And, and God, we just uh, pray for all those members that have tested positive for the COVID, that you would just bless them, encourage them, and help them to get well and get over it soon. We pray in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Well, God bless you all. It's, it's good to be here uh, uh, with you. And um, I want us to take a few minutes and uh, look at some thoughts that came to mind while our pastor was uh, uh, teaching and preaching to us out of, out of Mark and, and other places too, Matthew. But here, here's a thought that came to mind. And I got a blessing from it, and I want to share this thought with you. And the thought comes from this, just this phrase, the touch, the touch of Jesus. In, in Matthew chapter 8 and verse 02 oh, and 3, uh, very passage we're used to, but let's just notice this. Verse 2 of Matthew 8 says, And behold, there came a leper and worshiped him saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately the leprosy, the leprosy was cleansed. Here's a thought. How do you think that leper felt after he was healed? Well, hold that thought and go to chapter, um, Matthew chapter 8 and verse uh, 14. Listen to this. And when Jesus was come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother laid and sick of a fever, and he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and ministered unto him. How do you think she felt when that fever, when Jesus touched her and that fever left? Well, go to the next chapter in Matthew, chapter 9, and verse 20. Um, listen to this. And behold, a woman which was diseased with an issue of blood twelve years came behind him and touched the hem of his garment. Now, Jesus didn't touch her, but she touched him. For she said within herself, If I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. But Jesus turned him about when he saw her. And he said, uh, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that very hour. How do you think she felt? Um, how, how do you think a person feels when they're touched by the Lord Jesus? Hold that thought. Let me go to Matthew chapter 14 and verse uh, 36. Um, just that one verse. And besought him, that's G they besought Jesus, that they might only touch the hem of his garment. And as many as touched were made perfectly whole. How do you think they felt when they touched him or he touched them? You know, I, I, uh, the point is they felt Jesus' touch. You can feel his touch. When I got saved, of course, you all know, I mentioned before, I was uh, uh, making the, in the military a career. I'd been in the Navy for uh, 10 years at that point. And uh, uh, I, my way of thinking is, in those days, was if my good outweighed my bad, I'd be okay. Well, by the time I'd been a, a sailor in the Navy for 10 years, there wasn't no question about my good outweighing my bad. It was, uh, it was completely on the bad side. But anyway, when, I, when the man led me to faith in Christ, 2 o'clock, February the 7th, 1971, I felt something I felt my sins go away I felt something different uh, in in my uh, in my being um, and here here's the thing it's okay to feel things it's okay to feel 
um, we Baptist uh, some years ago kind of pulled away from feeling because of a certain movement that was going on among certain denominations that, uh, that emphasized uh, feeling above everything else. But hey, we're, we're, God created us and he gave us feelings. After I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I didn't, have, I didn't know a whole lot. I didn't have all the answers, but I felt something. I felt different. And I want us to consider just for a minute some, uh, the healing touch of Jesus. Um, back in Matthew chapter uh, 14 and verse uh, 36 says, And besought him that they might only touch the hem of his garment, and as many as touched were made perfectly whole. And I got to thinking, thinking how, how do you think those people felt when they, were, when they touched Jesus or Jesus touched them? Um, um, and, and, and here's a, a thought to us born-again believers. Um, in James chapter 5 and verse uh, 14, y'all know this. It says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. You know, uh, Jesus is still, has, still has a healing touch. Uh, sometimes we get the idea that uh, I think that, uh, that he that, that all of that healing and stuff was in the, in the Bible and it doesn't happen. Do you feel sick? How do you feel tonight? If you feel sick and don't feel good, turn it over to Jesus. He's able to touch us. That there's a healing touch, and then. Um, Hold that thought and add to it the hearing touch of Jesus. And from that, I want to take a passage from uh, Acts chapter 10 and verse 44. Acts 10 and verse 44. And Peter had gone to the Cornelius uh, family and had witnessed to them. And Cornelius and his, uh, had gotten saved and got his whole family together. And then... Then in verse 44, it says, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came uh, with Peter, because that on the Gentiles was also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. As many as heard. Well, first comes, comes the hearing. Uh, hearing of the word, whether it comes through a preacher or another uh, a witness or through reading, you know. Uh, Romans 10 and verse 17 says, um, let me make sure I get it exactly right. Romans 10 and verse uh, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So there's the healing touch of Jesus, and then there's the hearing touch of Jesus. And then co certainly comes the drawing of the Holy Spirit, um, in, in, in a lost person's life. Um, Y'all know Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then, and then there's, um, take this illustration from Mark 7 and verse 31. Mark 7, verse 31. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sodom, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and he spit and touched his tongue and looked up to heaven and sighed and said unto them, Epapareth, that is, be opened. And straightway his ears were opened, and the string of his tongue was loosed, and he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man, and so on. Verse 37 says, And, and were beyond measure as 
astonished as he hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. So there's the, there's the healing touch of Jesus. There's the hearing touch of Jesus, if you will. And, 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 uh, uh, and so but the question that came to my mind about this deaf and dumb man that was healed, how do you think he felt? Do you think he felt better? I think he did. I think he, I think he probably said, yee-haw, and, and, and begin, to, begin to speak or begin to try to speak. Any. And then there's the hurt, heart touch of Jesus. Um, Jesus loves us in spite of our sin. Praise the Lord for that. And that's true of whether we're born again, child of God or not. Listen to 2 Peter chapter 3. And verse 9 says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering uh, to us. We're not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Did you know that God wants everybody to be saved? Everybody. Everybody. Wow. And, and he uses you and I, the church, and he uses us to do it. Here's the point brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'm speaking to me too. Let's keep ourselves touchable. Let's be able to be touched because there's the healing touch of Jesus. There's the hearing touch of Jesus. And there's the heart touch of Jesus. If you've never been born again, and I'm, I'm probably speaking to all born again believers, but Jesus said, you must be born again. You must be born again. And, uh, and by the way, I'm going to say it because I've never heard it from, I don't think I've ever heard it from a pulpit before. You will feel it. You will feel it. There will be something that you will feel. But if you didn't feel anything, trust Jesus' word. Uh, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. So it's, it's, it's not so much about feeling. It's about faith. I want to give you a little illustration that has meant a lot to me over the years. Picture in your mind, if you will, an old-fashioned train, coal train with a big chimney on it, a big smokestack, and the next little car on the train is called a coal car, and that's where they carried the coal when they would shovel it into the engine to make the steam. Then picture in your mind, after the coal car is the caboose. That's a short little train. Well, the engine in that train represents the gospel, represents Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That coal car hooked to the train represents our faith in Jesus and what he did on the cross. Then the caboose represents how we feel. Well, what happens if you take that little illustration, that train, and turn it around and put the caboose at the front? There's no power in the feeling. There's no power in the caboose. It's got to be the other way around. But when you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, there's the caboose that comes right along. There's the, there's the feeling, you know. The feeling will come along. Um, uh, it'll come along after. Um, think about it. All sins forgiven forever. And any sins that come along, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. When you know without a shadow of a doubt that you're going to heaven and you've got a place reserved there for you no matter what, when you realize Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you, you feel something. You feel it. You feel it. Now, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not one to... Uh, I don't show emotions real, real, uh, very much. But when I think about what's waiting for me, when I think about what's waiting for the born again believer, it makes me, yeehaw! That's what it makes me want to do. It makes me want to jump up and down and shout. You know, God knew we had feelings, and when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's a feeling that goes with it that comes along, and uh, when you realize. Uh, what you have in the Lord Jesus, when you realize um, uh, th that you have a place in, in his kingdom, when you realize that you're going to, you, the best is yet to come, no matter who's the president, no matter who's, no matter what happens, that to me, to me, that, it, it, if, 
I, some, I heard a preacher say at one time, if that don't ring your bell, you better check and see if your battery is broken. But anyway, there's a feeling. There's the healing touch of Jesus. They felt it. And then there's the hearing touch of Jesus. You have to, you, you know, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And then there's the heart touch of Jesus. When Jesus touches your heart, you know it. You will feel it. And it will, and then, of course, we get into the Word and we, we learn all the things that, and the doctrines and, the, uh, you know, and things that go with being saved and so on like that. But I just want to back up to that simple thing, a feeling, a feeling. How do you feel? I know sometimes we physically feel bad. Sometimes we're physically sick. But down in here where we live, if you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there's a feeling that goes with it. It comes right along with it. And so, and so uh, just let Jesus touch your heart. Just let, let yourself, uh, let your, let your <laughs> I guess, let go and just let God, you know. And so, I want us to pray together. I want us to pray that we would uh, enjoy being a Christian. I want us to pray that we would uh, have victory over all the things that's going on around us. And I know we will. And that, that's enough to make us feel pretty good. But anyway, pray with me. Father, thank you uh, for making us uh, emotional creatures, Lord, and to make us have feelings like you had feelings, uh, Lord, when you looked down on Jerusalem and, and uh, was, was just overwhelmed with, with emotion. Uh, and when you thought about your world that you created, that's turned, that so, uh, so many have turned away, and so many have not really been born again. But Lord, I just pray that you would help us to, uh, help us to enjoy being a Christian, help us to let our light shine, that others can see Christ in us, and help us to introduce people to, to the living Savior, and introduce people to you along the way according to what we say and according to what we do. Again, bless our pastors. He's away this week. Give him a good week and a refreshing week. And again, we pray especially for our veterans. Thank you for them. Bless them. And Lord, we, and, and, and those that are serving now and becoming, will become veterans. And so, Lord, we just want you to know that we love you. And may this be a good and a blessed day for you. Um, we pray these things in the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, God bless you all. Y'all have a good week. And uh, won't be long to hopefully we'll be getting back together. And uh, getting back to whatever kind of normal the Lord wants us to have. <laughs>